Hello, Rabbi Menis Friedman. Thank God it's Tuesday. I am so happy um, to be able to see you, hear you, and to be able to give our listeners the opportunity to hear some wisdom from you, which we always do during this program. Thank God it's Tuesday. And um, of course, uh, the question is a question that is very, very serious. Uh, we see how anti-Semitism is on the rise in the whole world. And um, I just went on Google today and I put in anti-Semitism and news and got 20 pages of one week's worth of news from probably not around the world, just U.S. So it's really scary it's giving us flashbacks and um of course the most important question is um how do we treat it how do we react to it what do we do i was just gonna ask you <laughs> did you notice the decrease did you notice that the protests are getting weak and and quieter and they're fading out am i is it my no not sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like, co yeah. co colleges are coming to an end. You know, their graduations. Maybe they have just a little bit more. So that's that's good news. <laughs> yeah, they they have other things on their mind, and and it's all forgotten. So hopefully that that is what's happening. Um, I I don't see who possibly can gain anything from anti-Semitism. The Nazis gained a lot. So when people say, oh, wh uh, how come we don't have miracles like we used to? The president of Iran and the foreign minister. Yeah, that's pretty miraculous. <laughs> that's that's crazy miraculous. Like, what, will take, what will it take to get your attention? <laughs> so I, I have a feeling that if the Torah didn't tell us that a miracle happened at the splitting of the sea, we, we wouldn't know that it's a miracle. We would say, yeah, whatever, something weird happened. God has to tell us, I did that. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> but in you know, Iran doesn't realize from just from that event alone. And from the total failure of 300 rockets. If they don't get it, they're hopeless. <laughs> they're, they're brain dead. I'm sure they get it. And they're sitting around and talking about the God of Israel. Don't mess with him. It's got to be happening. <laughs> and it seems like Iran entity that has something to gain because their only claim to fame in the region is that they're anti-Israel. And to keep that position, they need to be threatening and, and rattling their swords all the time. If they are discouraged, it's pretty much over. Yeah, but we still see things and draw up parallels um, of how the Jewish students are being prevented and Jewish professors too. It's in the news today that the Jewish professor with a tenure in Columbia University, I believe, was led back in and, uh, you know, being they they can't enter their own colleges. I mean, that's Vienna 1938. Um, and other things like crazy things like uh Jerry Seinfeld was uh booed <laughs> giving a speech at Duke University uh, University his uh own alma mater and uh it's like uh, people got a kick out of him for what 9 years his show was the more most popular show uh on television and all of a sudden he is a persona non grata i mean this is an entertainer yet uh, you know i mean Maybe he just wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen to his speech? Yeah, the speech was pretty it boring. Was, yeah, it was so disappointing. They were expecting hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. 
We need to be focused on who we are and where we're going. This distraction is dangerous. We can't, we can't become victims again in our own minds. So, I don't know, the Jewish agencies that constantly, constantly focused on this anti-Semitism and that anti-Semitism with numbers and statistics and what are you, what are you trying to do? Make us give up? <laughs> what, are you, like, what are you trying to do? Rabbi Friedman, but what do we make out of the fact that ICC all of a sudden issues a warrant on Netanyahu <laughs> and the prime minister for, I mean, that's definitely anti-Semitic. Does it mean anything? Not yet. But everybody is appalled, so it must have some kind of meaning behind it. Well, the, the ugliness and the, and the actual stupidity of it is appalling. I don't know if it's a real threat to Israel or to even Netanyahu. I don't know. But this focus and this is not healthy. It is not good. Because what do you gain by announcing to the world, more people hate us, more people hate us? What are you doing? What, you're going you're gonna to get love this way? You're going to get It never works. The world doesn't like victims. Don't be a victim. It's not healthy. So what should we be focusing on? So on the one hand, you can say, why is everybody picking on us? Why is everybody against us? That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is, what makes us so unique? Yes, we are very different. Nobody picks on any other people like they pick on the Jewish people. Well, that means that we're different and we're special. What makes us special? That's a worthy question, a worthy subject. We've always been different. What? What makes us different? And it's not an easy answer. We've tried. In Germany, we were so German. In communist countries, we were such communist. What makes us different? If we knew the answer, we would feel much more secure. And we wouldn't care. St college students who don't know what a woman is are against the Jews. They don't know what Jews are either. What, what, are, we, what are we afraid of? Who are we being intimidated by? So it's not the it's not the world that is threatening us. It's our own un lack of clarity about who we are. If you know who you are, then you tell the world who you are. You don't run around crying, everybody hates us. So you can feel victimized by all the attention on Israel and Jews. Well, we really are different. We really are unique. Why is the whole world obsessed with us? Right now, the obsession is negative. They're obsessed with us. And it's such a great opportunity to tell the world, because the whole world is looking at us, listening to every word we utter. Robert Friedman, 100%. However, there is this element of fear that we cannot help to get over because there are too many parallels with what happened 70, 80 years ago. And it's very, very um, nerve wracking because, um, I mean, what is the guarantee that this is not it again, that this is not going to turn into what it turned into the first time around? 
circumstances are completely different. The world is different. Even if there were no parallels, we would still be afraid. Because psychologically, we're just... We've been, we've been victimized so often in history, the parallel doesn't even have to exist. <clears throat> if I can convince people there's no similarity whatsoever, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's scary. Look, it's, it's really um, not surprising. You can't blame anybody, but 2,000 years of persecution can do a little damage <laughs> to our self-image, to our, our identity, to our, our sanity. So why is it healthy, wealthy, powerful, successful Jews have nightmares because a teenager painted a swastika on the sidewalk? What, 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 what's wrong with you? It doesn't have to have parallels. We're just always on the verge of hysteria because the world is out to get us. I don't know if the world is out to get us. Oh, let's put it differently. The world is out to get us, meaning to understand us. They just don't get us. <laughs> and they don't get us because we never tell them who we are. Why do we have to be such a mystery to people? How is it that Muslims can say, the Israelis are not Jews, they're just Europeans from... But nobody knows who we are. You can make up stories where we're Jewish, we're not Jewish, we're gypsies, we're, what are we? Why is our identity so good? to borrow a modern term. And, and really, that's just on the surface. The people who scream, we are not Jews, we're just, you know, they know we're Jews and they know we're chosen and it scares them. But what makes everybody crazy is that we won't say it. I've never heard a prominent Jewish from any denomination, from any background, from any, say publicly, we are the chosen people. We stood at Mount Sinai. Well, before you, the big problem is that a lot of us don't know who we are ourselves. And I would say That's even a majority at this point. That's what I'm saying. The weakness is internal. <clears throat> the only one who came close to actually saying that was Ariel Sharon when he spoke at the UN. And whoever's listening, if you have a minute, look it up. Ariel Sharon speaks when at the 60th birthday of the United Nations. And he got a standing ovation. He basically said, without any qualifications, without any justifications, he said, I stand before you as a Jew. Our history began with our grandfather Abraham. And then we stood at Mount Sinai. He got a standing ovation. He also gave away Kush Katif. <laughs> which I'm sure he regretted all his life. So, if we tell the truth, we're better off always. And it's hard, hard to tell the truth because we're so convinced that nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it, but they already know it. So... Do you think it's a big deal that Netanyahu started to put that villain on publicly? Well, there's a cute cartoon. Uh, they show the helicopter crashing, 
and they said, we found the black box. <laughs> <laughs> and then they showed Netanyahu with the tefillin. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many people got this joke right now. <laughs> Good one. You know, the, the, the sequence, you know, the, the timing is not a coincidence. He puts on Tefillin and his biggest enemy crashes. I mean, come on. Rabbi Friedman, you know what else? blew my mind about this it's just uh i don't know how many people know that there is a, a jewish iranian boy that was supposed to be executed on shabbat um his name is arvin Natanel ben sonia and it was all over all jewish uh, groups sites to pray for this boy so he does not get executed he um Again, not a fair situation. I'm not going to get into it. It's a Shariat law that's uh, that's one-sided. It's, it's, he only was protecting himself, and yet he deserves the death penalty in accordance to Shariat law. And on Friday, I was crying when I saw how people are praying for him, praying for him to be saved. And um, again, this is against Iranian regime. This is this is the only way to save him is to change the Iranian regime, and this is. But people were not praying for anybody's death; they were praying to spare his life. And first and foremost, uh, after Shabbat, first thing I see is that the execution has been moved to Monday, and then on Sunday we get the news of uh, <laughs> um, Iranian president not being around anymore. That's it, done deal. And um, yeah. It's there's no mistake. It wasn't it wasn't a Moroccan president that perished. It was not a Lebanese president that perished. It was Iranian president, and pe people were p praying for life, not death. So I don't know how many people know this, but to me, this was I don't know. It's 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 an incredibly uplifting story because of unity, because of unity and of unity for the good and for the godly, and it worked. It worked. I just wanted to let our audience know about this. Are we seeing miracles? Yeah. The sad thing is that we need miracles. See, miracles means <clears throat> something beyond nature. Divine invention with a with a change of of a breach of nature right? our job for all these years for 3300 years was to make nature godly the need for miracles means nature is not godly yet so when things need to be straightened out we need a supernatural event a miracle to put us back on track so when miracles happen, on the one hand, fantastic, exciting, and we sing praises to God and thank you. On the other hand, we have to stop and think. We still need miracles? Nature is still not cooperating with godliness? Have we made any progress? Are we doing well in our job, in our mission? The ideal is... The world becomes good, and we never again need a miracle. Amen. Rabbi Friedman, but the interesting thing is that today we had our Israeli journalist uh, in the morning who said that uh, the news of the Iranian president uh, crashing on Sunday did not even make it top news in Israel. You were just in Israel. I'm just very curious um what kind of progress and changes have you seen um and experienced when they are from from where we were five three months ago is there progress is there a change progress? change change oh there's definitely a change the mood is very different 
last time or two years ago, almost two years ago, the mood was so joyous. This time it was much more sedate, much more... First of all, it's the middle of Svira, so there was no music, which kind of dampens things right away. <laughs> but also, you, you look around in Yerushalayim, and you would never know that this country is at war. It's business as usual, and if you hadn't listened to the news in the United States, know that Israel is actually fighting on three fronts. <laughs> it's amazing. Your country is fighting on three fronts and doesn't phase you at all. In, 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 to a certain degree. Because the mood is much more, much more somber. But there's no talk about war, there's no talk about should we go to Miron, should we not go to Miron? It's, um, it's, it's impressive on the one hand and it's a little worrisome on the other. It's impressive how people can just go about their lives. It's a little worrisome because are you a little uh, out of touch with reality? Is a little too much denial going on? It's hard to say. But there's one thing for sure. The army are the heroes, not the politicians. The soldiers are incredible. The government, nobody, nobody's excited. And that's part of what we've been talking about for three years now. Stand by for surprises. You, don't, you cannot predict what's going to happen the next tomorrow. Everything, everything we talk about was totally unpredictable. They would call for Netanyahu's arrest. <laughs> Who would, have, who would have predicted this? It's just crazy. And the surprises just keep on coming. I remember Biden is pro-Israel. <laughs> Biden is on our side. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> actually, Don't hold actually, your breath. <laughs> actually, Reverend Friedman, that's another thing I wanted to ask you about. Who's with us? Who is against us? It seems like things are shifting back and forth all the time. Before we were banking on the conservative, thought they they were, um, you know, the moral ones, the ones that are our friends. And now we see the car, the tables are turning, and the conservatives are actually against Israel, against helping, uh, sending uh, military aid there. So uh, the Democrats seem to be with us at this point. Um, so uh, what do we do with this one? I mean, <laughs> who can we count on? Who can we not count on? Who do we believe? Who do we not believe? Yeah, the world is so crazy. The only one we can count on now is Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> this, okay. is, this is the world we live in. Saudi Arabia is our best friend now. Oh, wow. We thought we had peace with Egypt. They won't go out of their way an, a single step. Nothing. And they allowed the tunnels to be built. So, no. Everything we thought we knew, no. And so there's only one fact left. We are the Jewish people. The land of Israel belongs to us. With or without the world's opinion. With or without the world's support. Can we say this with confidence? If we did, these problems would all disappear. 
But we, we, I think we talked about this. We're living in a world where there is no truth. We used to say we live in a world where there are many lies. Too many lies. Now, it's not too many lies. The only thing there is, is lies. There is nothing else. There isn't a word of truth anywhere, anywhere. And it seems like we don't really care for truth. Truth doesn't matter. It's not important. Is there even a truth? Maybe nothing is true. We really are living in a Hollywood world. This is one big movie. And you make up the script and you change it anytime you want. And nobody is really doing what they're apparently doing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So we know that our friends are not our friends. Why? Because everything is fake. Well, then our enemies are not real enemies either. That's also fake. I'm sure you stop the average campus and say, are you anti-Semitic? No, my best friends are Jews. So why are you protesting? <laughs> they have no idea. Even if they said they're anti-Semitic. So we have this really negative bent. Anything positive, we don't believe. Because it's all fake news. But anything negative, oh, no, that's true. That's true tendency to lean towards the negative. We are the only truth left. I'm sorry? We are the only truth left. Mm -hmm. And we're not telling anybody. <laughs> If we start to lie, then, then it's all over. Rabbi Friedman, but what about our own people turning on us? What about money being thrown by our own people to protest against us? What about the active members who go out to protest? Okay, they don't have money, but they have the energy and they'll go and protest again against us. What's causing oh. this? What's the logic behind it? Did you hear the reform rabbi speak? The uh, rabbi was speaking last week, I think. And he said this really painful thing. He said, we really have to stop and think, what have we done? All the Jewish pro-Palestinian students, they all went to our schools. They were all members in our temples. They all went to our camps. What did we do? How did we produce anti-Semitic Jews. You know, I think the reform movement is not going to produce very observant Jews. But anti-Semitic? <laughs> It's like... And then he says, because we missed one important principle. Ahavat Yisrael. We never love Jews. Because that would be too parochial. That would be too racist. It would be too chauvinistic. So what do we got? Jews turning against Jews. And even that is not serious and it's not real. It's all, it's all just make-believe. So the real solution That has always been the solution. And every time in history when we were in a political crisis, what did we do? We went back to Judaism. Purim, like on Hanukkah. That's it. We must use the truth as our weapon. Not politics. Don't try to outlie the liars. Where is it going to get you? So we've just given up on truth. Nobody cares. Truth doesn't matter anymore. So the only way to survive is to tell a better lie. 
that is dangerous. So we have to tell the truth. The truth that everybody already knows anyway, and they're completely puzzled by the fact that we, who are the truth, are not saying it. That's why the attention is on Israel. Not because, but because they're dependent. The, the well-being of this planet is dependent on the Jews. And when we don't offer the solution, everybody gets frustrated. But they shouldn't tell us how to solve the problems. Don't tell us if you would only do this. No, no. If we have the truth, then let us tell you. <laughs> Don't tell us two state solutions and other Baba Mises. Rabbi Friedman, we've been saying this uh, for a long time that we have to be true to who we are. First of all, find out who we are, <laughs> and second of all, be true to it. And I think it's it's moving along very slowly. Uh, but uh, at this point, I'd like to give uh, a shout out, shout out to JTV, where you appear quite often. A terrific uh, English uh, host there. You definitely leave a trace everywhere you go because now he's also quoting you and saying the same thing. And uh, we're doing it on this program, so Rabbi Friedman thank you thank you for this direction because obviously this is the, on, the right way and the only way for all of us and i hope that people who are listening to us are really paying attention um because this is this is it this is the only solution i also wanted to ask you does it feel like there has been some sort of a shift or is it just my wishful thinking but some sort of a shift in the atmosphere for the good i mean especially very very recently maybe like in the last week um it, it seems like Jews became a little bit happier, and I'd like to know if they, it's always good. If there is a reason for it, uh, is something happening spiritually? There's always something happening, and it's all positive. The question is only what appears on the surface. The surface is always a lie. Even physically, what a, cha what a chair looks like is not what it really is. So the surface is always hiding what is beneath it. Just under the surface, everything is great. We're moving in direction. We're getting very close to Mashiach. It's all positive. But that upper layer where lies thrive we gotta fix that it's just the upper layer just the surface that needs to be cleaned up a little bit so it's not like we have to change the world the world is great because the truth is great this this artificial fake layer of nonsense and and Hollywood values and fantasies. It, it's only it's only skin deep. So it's not a massive job that we need to do. It should be quite simple. Just state the obvious. Because nobody does. I think this not knowing what a woman is, how crazy is that? And why did it happen just now? Because it's such a useful metaphor for the whole craziness of everything else that's going on. If you're not ashamed to say, I don't know what a woman is, then why do you say anything at all? <laughs> then you have no right to an opinion on anything. See, Reverend Friedman, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Everything is becoming funny. It's just becoming funny because it so does not make sense that I think people are actually developing a greater sense of humor 
<laughs> than they had a little while ago because otherwise uh how else can we look at the world the way it is right now Just cartoon israel is guilty of genocide well first of all <laughs> we may be guilty of attempting genocide we haven't we haven't succeeded <laughs> So, people use the word genocide like they use the word woman. And you ask them, what do you mean? Oh, I don't know. I'm not a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it, when we look back at it, after it's all over, when, when we look back at it, it will be the funniest, the most hilarious sitcom I, who thought up this funny yeah it hurts a little but it's anyway. already funny <laughs> Robert Friedman amazing amazing you if, if Jerry Seinfeld if Jerry Seinfeld is not funny everything it's over <laughs> that's the one surprise nobody expected he's not funny <laughs> then what then what's real in this world because everything else became so much funnier than him <laughs> he, he already he's out news is funny. Yeah, exactly news is the funniest the funniest thing on television <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Friedman amazing you turned a very very serious and scary topic into a positive uplifting um, view that we can take away and um and and actually do something exactly exactly so we actually yeah you gave us another another amazing program another tool to take away and um in order to change ourselves for the better and the world for the better i don't know how you do this but uh thank you so much for this <laughs> amazing <laughs> And um, so, so, so happy to be able to bring this to our listeners, our audience. And thank you again for everything you're doing for all of us on a daily basis. So historically, the 33rd day of the Omer, which is the yard site of Reb Shimon Bar Yochoi, when additionally goes to Maron to his, to his grave, Today, the government is trying to decide whether they should allow a little bit, not a lot. But that day, which is Wednesday, tomorrow? I thought Sunday. Uh, Lag Baumer? Sunday. It's Sunday, right. That's why there's going to be a big parade uh, in New York. So, on that day, the miracles... The availability of miracles. In fact, uh, we're told that back in the olden days in Lubavitch, all year people looked forward to Lagba Omer for the miracles that they needed. Particularly children, having children. So on that day, we should do something really, really special. I'm going do a to. Do you haven't done? I'm going to a wedding. <laughs> yeah. The only day in these months that, um, that we make weddings. So plan something good. Plan to, that you've never done before or doing a mitzvah the way you've never done it before because it is a holy, holy day. Rabbi Friedman, amazing. Thank you so much for the positivity that you give us, for the hope, for um, for just this this incredible vibe. Thank you so much. And we're so grateful for you for allocating this time to us and um, so looking forward to more uplifting moments with you. Thank you so much. Have an amazing rest of the time in Utah at, at the retreat. I know you're doing wonders for everybody who is there and I'm so sorry to be missing it this time around. Hopefully to be able to join next time. It is beautiful. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.